Assalamu alaikum. It's an honor to be here. Among believers, it's a, it's a phenomenal moment to be, to be here. Uh, so, uh, let me start by telling a brief uh, history about my story and how I became a submitted. And uh, my presentation is called The Right Path and the Myths of Intercession because this is a subject that I was really one of the subjects that moved me into submission during the year. So, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, there is no other God beside God. So, let me start by saying I'm a believer. But to be a believer, you need really to define what you believe in. And also, very importantly, what you don't believe in. It's, it's you know, when you say a believer, a lot of mention in the Quran says the believers, but what, what exactly do we believe in? It's very well defined, very well detailed. It takes some time to recognize what exactly you believe in, and most importantly, not what you believe in. I began to recognize that this is important as well. So, I believe in God, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, our Creator, as uh, in Surah 6, 1 or 2. Such is God, your Lord. There is no God except He, the Creator of all things. You shall worship Him alone. He is in control of all things. Such a wonderful verse that always reminds and simplifies exactly who are we worshipping, who are we submitting to. And I also believe in Rashad Khalifa as God's messenger of the continent, as I believe in other messengers that God sent to us. Like Muhammad, Abraham, Jesus, Moses and others. Dr. Rashad never asked us anyone to add the name of God, to add his name to God, or change your prayers to mention him. Or make shirk salawat. That was important to me. Because, you know, I was born in Sunni, Sunni Islam and I've seen the, the really shirk salawat that people are preaching every single day in my beliefs, in my country. And you feel distance from that kind of prayer. So when you see a messenger that comes in and clarifies this, this is, becomes your path. That was, and also obviously the miracle that was I love the word simple to understand, impossible to imitate. You know, that was just, that, that, that few words was really astonishing to me and the miracle that we can all see today. Rashad Khalifa in his newsletter number 15, published in 1989, asked a very important question that changed my life. Can you give me one, just one good reason why I could not be God's messenger? I've read all of those newsletters more than once, going through each page. I was struggling, trying to understand, trying to know the faith. And that was the question that was really a headline of one of those this issue of number 50 that I'm sure all of you guys read. If you didn't, you should look at it more carefully and read it because it truly changed my life. Because I simply couldn't find one single reason. And the only solution was to believe and submit. So this is where it comes in, Surah 30, verse 20. If they argue with you, then say, I have simply submitted myself to God. And those who follow me, you shall proclaim to those who receive the scripture, as well as those who did not. Would you submit? If they submit, they then have been guided. But if they turn away, your sole mission is to deliver this message. God is sea of all people. It's this kind of verses that completes the picture. This kind of pictures, verses that guide you truly to the right path. My journey to this faith is, is, is truly a long and full of doubts, questions, research. I also knew from the Quran the need for knowledge that leads to the right path. This is very important. Those who are blessed with knowledge. I really, really want you to, to Look into this verse and, and, and it's blessed with knowledge. So then it, knowledge is a blessing. will recognize the truth from your Lord. So uh, this, this verse to me was really a, a very important one because it shows you that knowledge is a blessing. Trying to know and seeking knowledge is very important. The truth from your Lord, they believe in it. In their hearts. Their hearts. Although it's knowledge, but it's actually tied to hearts which was kind of 
interesting comparison to me. You see, it kind of starts with logic, with knowledge. We obviously all, all observe knowledge with our hearts, with our minds. But then the verse moves to hearts. We already accept it. Most assuredly, most assuredly, God guides the believer in the right path. So knowledge, heart, right path, this is what the kind of indicators I'm looking for. As I said in the beginning, you need to define what you don't believe in as well. So the right path will lead you to know there are other paths that they might look, have a lot of followers. Uh, you know, the problem was being born in Sunni Islam that those people actually recite the Quran in their prayers. They have the facade of the religion. They say the content. They say, they talk to people with it every day in the mosque and they want you to believe that what they're saying is true. They, they give you that false impression. And that reminds me of a small social case they did a couple of years ago. It's on YouTube. You can, guide, you can search it and it's very interesting. They've gathered 10 people in a room. Nine of them, they've given them two hours. One of them is very long, very clearly long, and the one of them is short. He agreed with the nine people to fool the, the last person, the tenth person. They all agreed that the shorter one is the longer one. So when you look at the sheet, and everyone points, oh, this is the long one, oh, this is the short one. Everyone is pointing at this only person who was fooled into this trap. You know, he just can't believe his eyes. He looks at the arms and he says, I can't believe it. This is <laughs> how can you guys all agree that this is the long one? It's not. After hours, they, he finally, he finally, he didn't submit to his logic, he submitted to them. He said, yes, this is, uh, you know, I, I, I agree. I mean, they can't all be wrong. They, they might, does something must be, my eyes are wrong, I don't know. It's like, unbelievably, I've spoken with every one of them, and they all agree that this is the longer one. And I know I see it differently, but, you know, I agree. So... I'm just say, saying how difficult it is when you are inside uh, a community. Uh, I, I come from originally from Egypt, and Sunni Islam is very strong. And unfortunately, the strength of pushing people, whatever you guys agree here today and take it as for granted, is called polygamy and, and infidelity in, in other places. So it's it's very hard to see that right path within this cloud of, of people building and making you believe that there is other things that is right. So, Quran also cleared that cause. Thank God, uh, Surah 12, uh, verses 106 and 108, the majority of those who believe in God do not do so without committing idol worship. Such a beautiful summary. I mean, it just shows you that the problem is sometimes, and it's there. The majority of those who believe, so there are believers, but they believe in God. They say it by the word. They say it with their tongue, but the reality is they committing idol worship. Say, this is my past. I invite to God on the basis of a clear proof. That's what exactly what Dr. Rashad did. And so do those who follow me. God, people reply, I'm not an idol worshiper. That's what, what I said to my people in my country. You see, uh, one of the worst types of idol worshiping, in my opinion, that exists today in, in, in the other Muslim or, you know, quote unquote, called Muslims, as highlighted in, by Dr. Rashad in Appendix 8, the myth of intercession. I devoted my life for that purpose clearly because it's a very clear case of idol worship. You can see it and it points immediately. They believe that Muhammad can take them out of hell. They believe in a, in a long, long story that all comes from. Uh, the satanic verses that is in hadith that's unfortunately very, very powerful in their minds. Although perfectly summarized in Appendix 8, I've researched this subject even further. In my book, I have a small book that was published online. It's called Muhammad as a God and the Abandoned Quran. Obviously, the, the headline is very, would angry a lot of other people, but I think it summarizes exactly what it is. You see, I see that the This is exactly the satin trick, trick that it does, exactly, you can compare it with, with, with the Christianity or the false Christianity. Jesus as well, you can see that it's the same, if you can look at the skeleton, you can see that it's exactly the same happened. Creating an idol from one of these messengers, 
You know, they were created for Muhammad, they created for Muhammad. Say, hey God, believing the idol will save you from hell. It's exactly the same if you know if you take the roots and, and look at the problem and see the components of the satin fingerprint, give you what sounds like an easy door to attract the weak from the good deeds. They show you a, a, what, what looks like a better exit, you know. You just need to believe in Jesus and you can go to heaven, you know. Why go to Salah and make the can be good to people where you can have an exit? Just believe in Muhammad as your we call it an Arabic Shafia, which means you know the, the person who will take your sins away on the day of judgment, or goes to ask God for you, forgive me and forgive him, instead of God forgiving you, so you're asking God forgiveness for him. They actually make people in mosques ask for the Muhammad as Shafi'a, instead of worshipping God. You see, it's an integral part of the right path. So the three components that I believe are very clear that shows that this kind of shafa'a is, is idol worshipping, that God asked the ask us very clearly, we should not make any distinctions among God's messengers. God said, in Surah 1, verse 285, the messenger has believed in what sent down to him from the Lord, from his Lord. Okay. I'm sorry for the number. Okay. And so did he, the, the believers, they believe in God, his angels, his scripture, and his messengers. We make no distinction. We make no distinction among any of his messengers. They say, we hear and we obey. Forgive us, our Lord, to you, this is ultimate, to you, this is the ultimate destiny. How can you believe in this verse and still believe in Muhammad as your intercessor? I can't believe it. Another verse, they worship beside God, either that possess no power to harm them or benefit them. And they say, this is our intercessor at God. Say, are you informing God of something he does not know in the heavens or the earth? Are you informing, I mean, God is asking that puzzling question. I mean, it's so clear and they still believe it. Are you informing God of something he just, the concept has just vanished, it's blown out of way. He does not know in the heavens or the earth, be he glorified, he is the most high, far above needing partners. How can you accept intercession in your face and still claim to believe in the Quran that clearly states that believing in intercession is worship beside God? Uh, oh, you believe you shall give the charity from previous we have given to you before a day comes where there's no trade, no nepotism, and no intercession. It's just, you know, it's mind baffling to me that people would still go and claim that in the day of judgment where we have such verses that are so clear, so powerful, so direct, it's not hidden, it's not like, it's, it's just there. These believers are unjust. And this is another one. With regard to those who have deserved the retribution, can you save those who are already in hell? I don't know. And I just, you know, I've had this long, long hours of arguments with other shapes and over the online and face to face, and they look at me and they laugh and they say, oh, he doesn't mean that. Oh, we have this hadith that says he can save them from hell. How can, I mean, it's just mind baffling to me that people can just ignore the Quran and move to whatever they have. Some have said he will not touch us except for a limited number of days. You see, the problem is with, it's also very connected, as Dr. Rashad also explained. It's very well connected to the other. A lot of Muslim believes that they will go to hell for a specific period and they come out by Muhammad request. So they changed the whole mechanism of God forgiving and God pushing the believers to heaven by switching to a whole new plan that surprisingly is also replied to the Quran. This is the Jews who first created this false beliefs and God replied to them. And what do you say to me when I tell them that? Say, oh, this is for the Jews. We were not responsible. Oh, this is not for us. You know, we don't care. This is the way we will stay in hell for a few days. Exactly what they said. Some have said he will not touch us except for a limited number of days. Say, have you taken such a pledge from God? God never breaks his, his pledge. It's like, show me the pledge, show me where you get this. You know what they say when they hear that? You say, oh yeah, we have the pledge, we have the sunnah, we have the hadith, it says we have the pledge here, right here. Or are you saying about God what you don't know? And I tell them, no, yes, you are saying about God what you don't know. Anyway, obviously the right pass, the only path to perfect happiness, now and forever, is 
the content prayer, the salah, the sharia, the zakat, the fasting, and the prayer. This is the path. There's no way, there's no shortcuts. There's no shortcuts. And uh, obviously, you all know these beautiful verses that summarize the right path away from the shirk and the idol worshippers and the other paths that people select. You know, they believe it's a shortcut. They just don't know what what's they're missing from, from doing the, the what God asks us to do. And um, last thing before I wrap up, this is an amazing documentary that I have seen. Both of them are amazing. I don't know if anyone I don't know if anyone has seen those documentaries. No? Yeah? Anyone have seen them? Okay. If if please. This is just I, I love those documentaries. My daughters really hate me because I keep replaying them all the time in the house. But, you know, they are phenomenal uh, uh, about life. And I think they are, I think they are a religious experience. When I said them, I think I'm in a prayer when I watch them. I see God creation. But I really want to point to something that is really extraordinary in those two films. You see, you can, this is some of the knowledge that you would be collecting from those movies. But you see the red, uh, it actually, this small bird comes out in a herd that is 1.5 1. 1. billion. The herd size is 1.5 billion. Just imagine, imagine what you eat. Imagine the size. The locust swarm could consist of as, as many 12.5 trillion insects. Huh? Two minutes, okay. Red carp swarms can reach 120 million. I'm, I'm almost done. Spring groups can reach 1 million. Okay? Just imagine there is, I don't know, I can't even absorb the number, 10 quantal living insects, and 10,000 trillion ants are alive, and this amazingly long, long, long number, which is 20 billion, billion individual animals, I copy sponsor links by mistake. My point is, look at our Quran. Look, look at the Quran and what he says at this. We made it a habitat for habitable for you and for creatures you don't provide for. When you watch those documentaries, you wonder where are those people? How can you feed 1.5 billion birds? Who's feeding them? God. God is feeding them. And he said that. It's a small verse that shows you the dimension. And there is not a creature on earth whose provision is not guaranteed by God. And he knows its course. When you saw those herds moving across the you know, the, the, you, you just, you know, immediately those two verses came in my mind. And it's fine and destiny. It's course and it's fine and destiny. All are recorded in a profound record. That's, you know, one big kind of database. I have put my trust in God, my Lord, and your Lord. There is not a creature that he does not control. My Lord is on the right path. Thank you so much for your Thank you so much. <laughs> How I came across the message? Is that the question? Well, I've been struggling. I came through the message by, I don't know what exactly I am. I know I was like an orphan in the middle of people who say things differently, but I, it just started by, you know, having a distance with what I'm seeing in my society, and it was very painful. You know, you have family, you have relatives, and they talk to you emotionally. They say to you, don't go there. Why, why are you using your mind? Why not surrender with us? I mean, why argue and why doubt? And it, it takes time. So I came to the message, I believe, probably four years ago, three years ago, when I started searching online, and I've, I already had some of my research done, and then exactly matches what Dr. Rashad was saying with the videos, and uh, I started reading his version, the, the translation, the English translation, and I was very inspired by it. I actually sometimes, although I read it in Arabic, I feel the English version, and actually sometimes very detailed and gives a lot of inspiration, and uh, it just clicked. And you know, I coincidentally, by uh, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't call it a miracle, but I, Karim was the, my friend that actually got me to the group here, and. Uh, yeah, it was very random, and uh, so I believe I'm here for, for a certain purpose, I'm sure for that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. 
One more question, go ahead. Yes. That's a very good question. The question for people in the back might not hear it. It's a question: Do you understand the Quran more in Arabic or in English? The Doctor Rashad. Yeah. Well, uh, I think it's very inspiring to read the Quran in English because it's actually get you through the language barrier and you believe in the conceptual more. It, 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 it takes you away. And I think it's part of my strong beliefs today is actually because of the English version. Why? Because simply it took me away from the stereotyping that they keep repeating. Because they see, they use the same verses to brainwash you in a sense. So getting away from the language barrier into the English version helped me a lot to recognize the concepts and the values, not the, just the language. And you know that a lot of those Muslim Sunnis, they believe that the only Quran can be recited in Arabic. And you can only understand that in Arabic, and they have all of this Arabic big thing, which is, I still believe the English is, is, is amazingly well, well written, very detailed, you know, it's magically a wonderful book to read in, in any language, and especially the English version. Okay. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much.